Hey, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman, and we are going to start our chapter 27, The Doctrine of Sin. So, um, we'll just start right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this story, because now you can see the screen, and you're able to uh, go along with the story, and so it makes it a lot easier for me to be able to just read, and it makes more sense to you. Says I grew up in rural northern Indiana where pig farming is common. I used to have to work among the pigs, feeding them, tending to their physical and medical needs, and cleaning up after them. If you have never worked around farm animals, you probably cannot imagine how bad a pen and a barn stinks when the pigs have been shut up in it all winter. It will bring tears to your eyes, take your breath away, and cause you to long for a white collar job. Uh, I'll throw this in there. We had a pig farm when I was a little girl and it was a farm. I mean, it was a big, big, it was kind of like the, the chicken um, houses that you see, how big they are, but it was full of pigs and it had a lagoon and big feeders in it. So there were hundreds and hundreds of pigs. And I remember my daddy and my brother smelled so bad when they came in from working at the, in the pig barn that they had to take their clothes off immediately when they walked through the door and put them in the washing machine. But I just thought I'd throw that in. It says, but one thing I noticed, the pigs did not mind it. I never saw a pig walk into a pen, sniff the air in disgust and turn around and walk out because the place smelled so bad. It always seemed okay to the pig. Every pig I ever saw looked completely at home in a pig pen. When it comes to sin, we're like little pigs. The smell of sin doesn't seem so bad to us. We don't even notice a lot of it. But to God, it smells like a thousand pigs that were kept in his living room for the winter. Man does not and cannot grasp the awfulness of sin to the degree God does. But for two reasons, we must try to grasp it as much as we can. First, sin is harmful. To us, it is self-destructive. All sins are boomerangs. They come back to hurt us every time. Second, sin grieves God. And if we hope to live a life pleasing to him, we must try to live a life of righteousness. This is a review, so we're going to skip through the review and start here. And it says that, um, the four major subdivisions of the doctrine of sin are nature, fall, corruption, rebellion. And you can see the symbols he has for these. Um, to tell you the truth, the nature is a mirror. So we're supposed to look at a mirror and the mirror is cracked. The fall is somebody actually falling in the symbol. Corruption is crossbars of the skull. And rebellion is a fist. So the first one is nature. And it says that sin is any lack of conformity to the moral perfection of God. It says all that is good, right, and pleasing. All that is good, right, and pleasant comes from God. Anything that does not come from God is the opposite. By definition, it must be bad, wrong, and unpleasant. We are creatures who sin. When we do, we bring bad, wrong, and unpleasant things into our lives. We diminish the reputation of God as his children. Let me hide this. And we decrease the interest of the non-Christian world. And we decrease the interest the non-Christian world might have in God because they do not see the difference between being a Christian and not being a Christian. That's nature. The second one is fall. The separation of Adam and Eve from God in the Garden of Eden because of original sin. All the pain, all the evil, all the suffering that is in the world, that has ever been in the world, and that will ever be in the world, can be traced back to one event when Adam and Eve disobeyed God in the garden because of the, 
I don't even know how to say that word. Cata cataclysmically. Uh, because of the cataclysmically negative effects of that event, it has been referred to as the fall of man. When the, the central passage, do we not? Oh, the central passage on the, the uh, nature, I didn't read it. All unrighteousness is sin. 1 John 5, 17. Now, on the fall of man, the central passage is, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from it its fruit and ate. And she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Genesis 3, 6. The third thing is corruption. Mankind as a whole was corrupted by the original fall. Sin entered mankind. And now all men are corrupted with sin. It is not that man is not capable of doing good, for certainly some people do wonderful things. Or even that he is as bad as he could be, many people could be much worse than they are. It is just that he cannot keep from doing that which is bad. Because his essential nature has been corrupted. David said, in sin, my mother conceived me. Psalm 51, 5. This does not mean that his mother sinned, but that all men are born sinners. We are not sinners because we sin. We sin because we are sinners. The central passage for this is, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath. Ephesians 2, verses 1 and 3. 1 through 3, probably, but it says 1 and 3. Okay, symbol the fifth, rebellion. Because man's internal nature has been corrupted by sin, he cannot keep from committing personal sins. Man's heart has been corrupted, and therefore he commits individual personal sins. Some of these sins are sins of commission, things we ought not to do, but do. And some are sins of omission, things we ought not to do, but, wait a minute, things that we ought to do, but don't. They may be tangible acts, or they may be I think that's defiant attitudes, motives, or per perspectives. When we compare ourselves with other people on external things, we might not do so badly. But when we compare ourselves with Jesus, who had no imperfections in act, thought, motive, word, or deed, we see that we fall short. That's the truth. For all have sinned, this is the passage, for all have sinned and fall short fall short of the glory of God, for the wages of sin is death, Romans 3.23 and 6.23. Now we're to fill in the blank. It says, sin is any lack of conformity to the moral perfection of God. That is nature. The separation of Adam and Eve from God in the Garden of Eden because of original sin. That's the fall. Mankind as a whole was corrupted by the original fall. That's, I believe it's corrupted. I have to go back and look to make sure. Yeah, corruption. And four, the fist, you can just think of the fist that your kids are making a fist because they're rebellious. Because <laughs> that's us to God. Rebellion, kept being corrupt by sin, he cannot, wait a minute, because man's internal nature has been corrupted by sin. He cannot keep from committing personal sins. And then he goes back and he lets you fill in the blank again. And then this is a self-test. 
nature sin as any lack of conformity to the moral blank of God. I have to go back and look. Chris says it's perfection of God. Two, fall. The fall of Adam and Eve from God in the Garden of Eden because of the original sin. I don't know if he actually uses fall in that sentence or not. We can see. The separation of Adam and Eve goes there. So this is fall and separation. And this is nature and perfection. And the, this one is uh, corruption. Man as a whole was corrupted by the original fall. So those are the same word. Um, and then four is rebellion because man's internal nature has been corrupted by sin. He cannot keep from committing personal sins. I believe is what that one was. Yeah, personal sins. Um, so we have the doctrines, the, the pictures, and we started with the doctrine of the Bible. Number two was the doctrine of God. Number three was the doctrine of Christ. Number four was the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Number five was the doctrine of angels. Number six was the doctrine of man. And today we review the doctrine of sin, which is the apple. Tomorrow we will review the doctrine of salvation. Now, if you want to read further readings, you can always take the central passages and, you know, read. Um, I mean, to me, uh, all of these central passages are good, and you could actually read the whole chapter instead of just part of it. So you could write down 1 John 5, 17 and read 1 John 5, Genesis chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 2, and Romans chapter 3 and chapter 6. And it will give you a good um, overall view of sin. And that's it for today, y'all. We've already said our prayers. We prayed before the Bible study. So I will see you guys tomorrow. It's pretty simple with the doctrine of salvation. But that's a very important one because without salvation, we would be lost and doomed to hell. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful Monday, um, and praise the Lord today. Bye. Thanks for watching. Real Southern Woman. Oh, and thank you, Nancy, Elaine, Sandra, Martha, Anita, and Brenda for joining in this morning. Love y'all. Good morning. Real Southern people, um, I am, I just got a message that I can allow viewers to be in my broadcast. That's pretty cool. That's something new. Anyway, I'm late for Bible study. I'm going to start doing Bible study a little later because this week especially, the kids are out of school and um, we are staying up late and getting up later. Uh, so y'all keep that in mind. So I'll just come on when I can because this is kind of like a vacation week since the kids are out of school. And uh, But 10 o'clock is a time when a lot more people are awake. So um, I thought I'd go ahead and come on today and do my talk part before I do my study part. And um, I just wanted to let y'all know we had a wild weekend cooking for the chef. Um, then yesterday I got up and I was really sick with a migraine and I mean I was sick with a migraine. I don't normally get that sick with one and um, today I feel all much so much better. So uh, yes Martha you can see Chris on the screen as well this morning. Um, she says good morning Chris. Morning. Um, so we just had a really good weekend. We got a lot done. I wound up working on my old cookbook over the weekend some, um, and but I'll be working on the new one, of course, this week. I just wanted to uh, come on, like I said, in person first before I start my book study and tell y'all good morning and tell y'all um, that it was, it really was a pretty wild weekend. And um, 
but we'll say our prayers before our Bible study today, and um, it'll be a little different. So let's just say our prayers, and then I'm going to sign off and sign back on, and y'all can log back on with the book study. And today we're studying the doctrine of sin. So uh, we'll just say our prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this Monday morning. And we are actually getting a little rain here. We thank you for that. Um, we thank you for this Bible study. And we pray that you would have us uh, listen with open ears and open eyes today because it is the doctrine of sin. And we are all affected by sin. And we all have sin in our lives. And we all need your help. So just be with us as we prepare and get ready for the study and help us see what you would have us to see. Um, thank you for allowing us to do this over the internet and live in a place where it's not against the law. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay, I'll see y'all back in a minute. I'm going to log on and we're going to be on my computer with the book.